What's up, guys? This is Bobby Douglas, and we are back again today with another 2020 NBA Draft Prospect full game video breakdown. And today we're going to be looking at Creighton guard Tyson Alexander. Alexander just finished up his junior season for the his junior season for the Blue Jays, and he had a pretty successful season, averaging around 17 points a game, along with five rebounds a game, shooting close to 40 percent from three. He was a key part of a Creighton offense that was really potent, really explosive, um, really fun team to watch. Creighton is so I'm excited to watch this game with you guys. And hopefully you guys take away something from it as well. And yeah, let's get right into it. Got to mute it. Here we go. So he's going to be number five in the light blue. Again, Creighton's uniforms in this game are just awesome. And again, the game I picked up today is against Providence. And this is an odd game because Creighton is without Zegarowski for the early parts of this game because he was questionable with some illness. So it's Tyson Alexander's show to start the game, but Zagorowski ends up playing 32 minutes, so it's not really that big of a difference. But just to start the game, Creighton looks a little bit different personnel-wise. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So the things I like about Tyson Alexander, I think he's a very versatile scorer at 6'4". I think he can do a lot of things really well. I think he can drive the lane well. He's really good off of cuts, off of spot-ups, off of catch-and-shoot opportunities coming off screens. Um, he can handle it a little bit, get to the rim well. So there's a lot of things to like about his offensive game, and that's why I do think he'll be drafted a lot of people right now don't seem to have him in the top 60 of their big boards I think I have him solidly in the top 55 I think I have him 54th in the class right now and so again I really like his offensive versatility he's a guy who can really do it all on that end and then defensively as well he really he really came into his own as a defender let's see what he does here again right there he lost a ball on the dribble but and he's going to get good relocation right there and he's going to set it up again but defensively, he really came into his own this year. He emerged as Creighton's best perimeter defender on a team that desperately needed defense. Little unfortunate miscommunication between Bishop and Alexander right there. But, you know, he was really a good two-way player for Creighton. And again, they ended up being around a top 12 to 15 team in the country with everybody healthy. Zegarowski obviously got hurt towards the end of the year, so that limited their March Madness ceiling had there been a tournament. But, you know, Alexander really had a breakout season, and I remember watching him I got to watch him live his freshman year. They played at Northwestern, so I was lucky enough to go. And I came away really impressed with him. I thought he had a nice shooting stroke. He was a four-star kid, went to Oak Hill High, well, went to Oak Hill Academy in uh, Virginia, I think. And again, he just played really well in that game. And ever since he's been on my radar, that's a really, really high-level pass right there, right on the money to Christian Bishop for an easy alley-oop. And again, didn't really show a whole lot as a distributor just because they had Zegarowski, so he was primarily an off-ball guard. I do think he has a little bit of distributing uh, capability within him and I do think to be the most successful version of himself in the NBA I do think he's going to be a guy who needs to play point guard primarily I don't really see him as an off-ball threat in the NBA even though he spent the majority of his time doing so at Creighton just due to his size I see him more of an on-ball guy again 6'4 195 um, you know he's strong enough to finish inside um, against contact and through length so there is things to like about that. But again, 6'4", it does limit his physical his physical ceiling. So that's just things to look at as well. And he's going to get the ball right here. And again, good job just coming off of screens. You can see right there. So that time he got, he drew a foul. Again, doesn't really have elite quickness or um, burst, I would say, but he's pretty shifty, knows how to get to his spots well, and then once he gets to his spots, he is a pretty good finisher around the rim. And again, off cut, he can score in a variety of ways, which is one of the things I really like about him. And you can see Marcus Zagorowski is coming in already. So again, he was supposed to be injured for this game, and he was questionable coming into it, but obviously it wasn't that big of a concern as he's in two and a half minutes into the game. So, But again, Creighton's offense is extremely fluid. It's fun to watch. They're explosive. They're high scoring. Right there, that probably should have been a dunk, but that's a foul. Yeah. But yeah, there are a lot of things to like about Creighton. If Tyson Alexander came back to Creighton, which a lot of people expected that he would, he was seen as a guy that was, it was considered a shock when he announced that he was leaving for the draft and not even uh, considering the option of staying in school. And a lot of people were kind of surprised by that, including myself. I had Creighton as a national champion for next season, assuming Alexander stayed. Obviously, since he's gone, it definitely limits their ceiling for next season. So it's kind of a shame for Creighton fans. But I do think Alexander can still be a pretty solid pro.
So then here he is on the ball. Let's see what he does here. And again, he was seen as Creighton's best perimeter defender, I would say, um, especially at the guard spot because they had Ballack, Mitch Ballack and Marcus Zagorowski. Usually those three would all start. And Alexander would usually take the best offensive player on the perimeter for them. And so he really established himself as a two-way player this season at Creighton. Had some monster games for them, including this one. He dropped 24 points um, in 33 minutes. So he'll get going shortly, I presume. Don't think he scored yet. Here we go. Sticking with his man well. Identifying volume man pretty well as well. So that's good. Again, he's pretty slight to be banging down low. So I question his defensive versatility, I would say, because he is only 6'4", 195. He has a good frame for a guard, but obviously that's going to limit him, especially if he's going to play off the ball, which he seems to be um, looking to do at the NBA level. I'm not really sure if he can lead a team offensively, even though I do think that's his best bet to stick in the NBA if he wants. He needs to develop his ball skills a little bit more, in my opinion. But, you know, people have found their ways to the NBA in, vari in a var variety of ways, so... You know, I'm not really one to say what role would be best for him. But that's just the way I see it. I'm not really sure if he can be, if he can really thrive off the ball. The NBA just due to his size. Unless you put him with a tall point guard, which is possible. You're seeing a lot more of the big distributors in today's NBA. So I think maybe he could stick in that kind of a role. But again, I do think he, his ceiling is probably a, a high-level bench player. I would say, and right there, he did a nice job stopping on a dime and drawing the foul to get to the line for two free throws. Again, we got a media timeout here, so I'll skip this. But again, he is he's a guy who's like one of my favorite prospects in the draft just because I like watching him play more than anything. I think he's a fun player to watch. Um, again, he shoots it well, can handle it a little bit. Make smart decisions with the basketball when he has it. And so I do like that about his game. And let's see if he makes this free throw. He does. He was an 86% free throw shooter. So again, the shot has never been a really big concern with him. He's always been a knockdown three-point shooter and free throw shooter. Let's see if he makes this one. And he does. He knocks down both of those. So those are his first points of the game, I believe. Yeah, so right now it looks like he's on, I want to say that's, I'm not sure who that is for Providence. Right there, that is a travel on Degorowski, yeah. But again, I think he's a smart player overall. I think he makes reads on both ends pretty well. You know, he's a smart player off the ball on both ends, especially. I think he's a really good cutter, really good at identifying open space and getting to it defensively. I think he has good instincts overall, Can is capable of making big time plays on that end. And so I do, and again, he wasn't known as a real good defender coming into Crane, but he really grew into that role, especially this season. And he really became a way more versatile player and he really helped his draft stock. So you can see right here, he's doing a good job just walling up, bit on the pump fake a little bit, but it did enough to stay down and not allow any penetration off of it. So again, that showed pretty good promise on the ball right there. And again, you could see this is just like the total opposite of games we've been watching recently, right? It's already 16 to 10 with the first, within the first five minutes of the game, so... Again, this is a high-flying game. Providence Creighton. It's fun. And so Alexander's going to... Oh, he's number five in the light blue, obviously. I think I might have mentioned that earlier. May have also mentioned this earlier, but again, these uniforms for Creighton are just so cool. I love these. So that's another <laughs> thing to like about this game. Right there, good job identifying his man before going for the ball. He ended up saving a, probably an offensive rebound by Alfred Diallo just by checking his man and boxing him out. Let's see if they hit him. Oh, looked like he could have been open on the kick out to the weak side, but Ballack decided to go up for it with two, and then he got fouled, so solid play from him.
And Creighton's a team that will go extremely small. Their tallest starter usually is around 6'7", and that's Christian Bishop. So Alexander will likely be playing a lot of guys who are bigger than him in co- on the college level. So if you watch a lot of his Creighton games, you'll see that he's probably guarding bigger players. And so I like that he has experience guarding bigger players and more athletic players most likely, but I'm not really sure if he can really do that consistently at the NBA level. I'm not quite, I'm not super confident in his ability to guard multiple positions. I think he's more of a perimeter one through ones and small two defender. Not really sure if he can get out to threes, despite he has pretty good length right there. Not a great closeout. But again, I think he's a smart defender. He'll rarely lose his man on cuts, things like that. Right there, that was a really good rotation trying to body. Uh, I think that's Nate Watson. That's not really his fault that that was his man. He had to recover on the weak side help. So that's not really a him problem. That probably should have somebody. That probably should have been somebody else scrambling out to guard that. But he did a nice job at least trying to get there after he saw that his man was open. But that wasn't his fault, since he had responsibilities to cover the big man after Creighton doubled the drive coming from the right side. And again, I do think he's a smart defender positionally. Um, you know, I think he, he knows where he is on the floor, knows how to rotate properly. And again, he really showed a lot of growth on that. And in my opinion, this season. Right there. It looks like we got a foul on Pro- Providence. So. And Creighton should be another fun team to watch next year. They get they brought in a lot of interesting recruits. Obviously, they got Alex O'Connell, the, the Duke transfer. They got uh, this kid, Rati something. I think he's from Georgia or somewhere. Georgia, the country, not Georgia, the state. Um, he's supposed to be pretty good. He's ranked in the top 60 or 70 nationally. So Creighton will be a fun team to watch next year. Let's see. So right there, that's, a really, that's an NBA-level shot. That was probably NBA range. And again, right off the dribble off the screen. Knocks that one down. And again, he does have really awesome shot versatility. That's probably one of the biggest strengths in his game. Just being able to just get his shot off regardless of how or where it occurs. You saw that right there. That's a really just high level play. Coming off the dribble, stepping over to his left, and then knocking down to three ball. We got a timeout for Providence. So I'll skip this media timeout here. So here's Alexander on the ball, or he was on the ball. Oh, they missed Christian Bishop on the roll right there. So again, right here, again, nice handle. Good use of the shot fake, and he drills that one. Again, he's just kind of a crafty scorer. And again, he's super versatile. We've already seen him score off the dribble. We've seen him score off of free throws. And so I really do like his offensive game. I think that'll be a real sticking point for him in the league. And again, defensively, he's not super big in terms of height, but he does have long enough arms to be a disruptor, especially on the perimeter and through rotations. I think he can make a lot of weak side steals and just get a lot of tipped passes. So there really are a lot of things to like about his game, in my opinion. It's just a matter of how high is his ceiling, really. And again, he's seen it by a lot of guys who... A lot of guys are kind of a little bit uh, taken aback that he decided to leave. You know, he was seen as a guy right there. That was a pretty good stunt. Um, you know, not really much he could do there, but at least he got a stunt there, but ultimately led to the layup. But a lot of people didn't really like the, deci- the decision that he made, including NBA scouts. If you look at the Jeff Goodman article from Stadium, where they basically tell you who should stay, who should go. They, most of the NBA scouts said that he should have stayed for a senior year, and they didn't really know what he was doing. Um, I think that he's going to get drafted. So, you know, it's not a horrible decision to leave. I probably would have stayed another year, but again, I'm not really in that position. So 
I can't make the decision for him. And I, you know, I'm in, I have no place to do so either. So, you know, I do like him as a prospect, but I think he might have benefited from staying another year. That's just me. You know, we'll see. So he's out right here. And then I'll skip ahead to 2150 is when he comes back in. So I'll do that right now. Again, who's on the left wing right now. Getting a call from Doug McDermott, it looks like. Again, pretty solid break out of that cut right there. Diallo did a nice job cutting it off. Zagorowski just drilled that three, though. Again, this team is so much fun to watch. We got a little buffering action right here. Hopefully this clears up soon. Yeah, okay, we're good. But again, this team is so much fun to watch. They can shoot the three ball extremely well, and they're not afraid to take threes either. So again, right here, he's switched. Good job walling up and moving his feet right there, cutting off that drive along with the, uh, Denzel Mahoney. Got a foul, looks like, so we'll skip this free throw. We got a media timeout as well, so. So again, you can see that's like, the, that's the three-headed monster they have in the backcourt. Uh, Balak, Zagorowski, and Alexander, and they're all super, super talented. They're all very fun to watch as well. So Alexander's in the left corner right now. Didn't really isn't really doing much on this offensive possession. I would like him to I would like him to relocate right there. That's a good pass from Mahoney to Jefferson though. Would have liked him to relocate to that wing. I think he could have gotten a shot there, but he stayed, elected to stay in the corner. Ultimately, it didn't hurt Creighton. But. We got another foul here. So Alexander is guarding David Duke right now in the corner. And again, you could tell he's he doesn't really move a whole lot. He's not a quick, he's not really bouncing around defensively, but he just knows where he's supposed to be on the floor. You know, we see a lot of guys who are pretty active off the ball. They'll be jumping up and down. They'll be light on their feet. Alexander doesn't really have that to his game. I mean, that's something to easily to correct as well. But again, he just is always seems to be in the right position defensively. And so that's something I like about his game. Uh, right there, he looks like they tried to get him on the Iverson cut, but... Let's see what he does here. Good job not forcing anything there. And again, doesn't really have that explosive burst, but he's really good at getting free off of screens and off of movement without the ball. Um, but with the ball, he's not really super explosive, and that kind of limits his, ceiling, his ceiling as well, in my view. We got free throws here, so I'll skip these. Good, so Alexander's on Duke still. Right there, really good job. So right there, it was a really good job staying in front of Duke. However, he kind of got shoved off. That could have been an offensive foul, but nonetheless, again, that's why I worry about him a little bit in the NBA. That wasn't Duke, actually. That was something else. But Oh, wait, no, that was Duke. But um, that's why I worry about him a little bit just... I'm not really sure if he has the strength yet to just bang with NBA wings or NBA off-ball guards for that matter. But again, you saw the quickness and the, the movement of his feet right there. He did a good job cutting off the drive. He just got shoved off. That could have been an offensive foul too. But, um, you know, just that lack of strength right now that I think hopefully he'll end up getting. But again, he's already, he would be a senior this year. So again, I'm not really sure how much more he can really add. And we saw that left-handed layup that he just missed. Um, you know, that's just a shot that he's going to take, and I'm not really. That was like a little flex action that Providence just ran. Alexander did a nice job getting, nice job getting that rebound too. He also drew the foul, and I think he's going to be shooting free throws as well. But again, Providence likes to run those flex cuts as well. They'll have um, 
they'll have a guy in the corner run off a flex gun and they'll have a down screen for the screener and they'll try and get a high post touch out of it. We're going to see free throws from Alexander here. One and one, and he's going to knock that one down. Got that one too. I think he's four for four from the line right now. I think he's four for four, has nine points currently, I want to say. Get it on the ball. Good job helping and swiping at the ball. I think he got called for a foul. No, never mind. It was a hand check on, uh, I want to say it's on uh, Zagorowski. And there's the Pan American games where I think it was, I think the Big East on a team. Yeah, Tyshawn Alexander was on there. You could see him number five on the left corner. I think Nate Watson was there for Providence as well. Right there, everybody got fooled. Bishop and Alexander went, um, went to help on the drive. Nobody saw the slip. So that's on Bishop and Alexander. More on Bishop than Alexander, I would say. But we got another foul here, so I'll skip these free throws. That was here, so now he's on the ball. Let's see what let's see if Duke tries to drive him. Nope. So right there, okay, that's a really good job calling out the switch from Alexander. I thought for a second that he lost him. That should be a ooh, okay. So he gets injured here. I believe he's out for the rest of the half. But just to go back to, um, yeah, he's out for the rest of the half. I believe yes. But just to go back to that play, I want to see if I could get that play again. So yeah, here we go. So he's gonna. I don't usually do this, but he, okay, so he's guarding Duke right here, and he's going to lose him on the cut, but watch what he does. He's going to call out a switch with his teammate, and it works pretty seamlessly. It's a little bit late, but he ultimately gets the job done, and ultimately nothing really happens out of it, except for that uh, foul that he gets called for later, but that's later in the play, but he does avoid that actually just by calling out the switch and being aware of the situation, despite losing his man initially, so watch. So again, so Duke's going to give up the ball right here, and again, he's helping, so Duke is going to be flying, and then... Um, Alexander is going to lose him. And then immediately he calls out the switch to Mahoney and Mahoney is going to pick up Duke and it totally obliterates that action. And we get a clean switch here. DL is going to drive on him. And again, good job walling up, but you can see just again, the lack of upper body strength does hurt him, but that's just something I noticed as well. So again, really smart, heady defender in my opinion. And yeah, so that's the end of the first half for him. He ultimately comes back in the second half and plays well, but he's out for the last four and a half minutes of this one. So I will end the video here and get back to you with the second half. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe. And we'll see you for the second half. Thanks.